Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A global computer chip shortage now affecting Ford's ability to produce its most important product. Doc? Pfizer says its vaccine is safe and effective in children age 12 to 15. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, what we know about the results so far and what happens next in the effort to vaccinate this age group. A new drive through vaccination center, a big one right here in Sterling Heights. And vaccinations, that is the strategy the state is going with, not restrictions. We'll explain coming up. We'll start here at six with the numbers. Michigan reporting the highest new case count of coronavirus since early December. Yes, in the past 24 hours, Michigan added 6,311 new cases and 10 deaths. Beaumont making changes, expanding its COVID units at all hospitals, and the hospitals will now allow people who are fully vaccinated to visit patients who do not have COVID. More hope on the vaccine front. Detroit will now start offering vaccinations inside the TCF Center. That's in addition to the current drive up site, which is really in the garage. That will allow the city to expand capacity from 5,000 daily doses to 8,000. With cases rising so steadily in Michigan, many people are wondering why the state's response doesn't include more restrictions on its businesses like it did in the past. The answer, more people getting access to the vaccines. Sean Lay spoke with Michigan's health director today. He joins us now live with a look at the shift in focus from shutdowns to shots. Sean. That's a very good way of putting it. We're here at a new vaccination clinic, Sterling Heights uh, Lakeside Mall, the old Sears parking lot. Started today, I can tell you it was busy today. And the state health director telling me getting shots is the key right now, not shutdowns. We think it's going to be an opportunity to provide mass vaccinations to not just the residents of Sterling Heights, but to all of Macomb County. Sterling Heights opening this new drive through COVID-19 vaccination site at the former Sears parking lot at Lakeside Mall. The state health director, Elizabeth Hertel, saying it's shots, not shutdowns, to put a dent in the skyrocketing rates of positive COVID cases. The state says the key is fewer people battling the virus not in intensive care. The state keeping a close eye on hospitalizations. Until we get to a point where we believe we are at a, uh, a place that the, our hospitals cannot handle the capacity that is coming in. We will continue to urge the mitigation measures in place. One hot spot, Macomb County. We've seen an increase in 118% of cases. The state says it's a race to get people vaccinated versus the rapid spread with no restrictions being put back in place. How high do county health officials think cases need to go before more action is taken? The answer again, getting shots into arms. Now we have these other groups that are now just eligible for vaccine and we got to work on getting them to the clinic sites and getting them vaccinated. And that's how we're going to slow this down. It was just a few weeks ago we were searching for vaccine for you. Now they're searching for more people to come and get the vaccine here. MacombGov.org. MacombGov.org to get an appointment here in Sterling Heights. Guys, I checked 1,360 new cases in Macomb County alone in the past 48 hours. We're live tonight. Sean Lay, Local 4. Karen Devin, back to you. Uh, Sean, did the director Hertel say anything about the possibility of using vaccine passports? We did ask her about that because that is causing some ripple effects and controversies in other states yeah. even coming out of the White House. She said there's been no talk about that whatsoever. All the focus right now is getting shots into arms, period. Yeah, you got it. All right, Sean. Well, meantime, today Pfizer announced its vaccine is successful at preventing COVID-19 in children ages 12 to 15. Now, this is the first study to report results in that age group and could be a major boost toward protecting those older children and teens. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge joins us with a closer look at what we know and what's next. Doc? Yeah, Karen, so the information is coming from a press release from Pfizer. So the data has yet to be published and peer reviewed, but if it all checks out, it is very encouraging and it's a step forward in the effort to protect children from COVID-19. Adolescents may be one step closer to getting vaccinated against COVID-19. Pfizer says data from a late stage trial shows its vaccine is highly effective in that age group. The phase three trial was relatively small with 2,260 children aged 12 to 15 years old. 
18 cases of COVID-19 were reported among those who got the placebo, but none were seen in the vaccinated group, an efficacy rate of 100%. The vaccine was also well tolerated with no significant side effects reported. Perhaps most encouraging, the antibody levels in the 12 to 15 year olds were actually higher than those seen in the 16 to 25 year old group in the original trial. The virus neutralizing antibody titers, which is probably the closest thing we have to a surrogate for protection, was super high in, in the vaccinated group. So I think it's 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 a likely a green light to move forward to uh, move down in terms of vaccinating adolescents 12 to 15. While most children have suffered mild symptoms from COVID-19, they are still spreading the virus. Infectious disease experts say protecting kids will ultimately be necessary to stop the pandemic. By the fall, I think there's a good possibility we'll be vaccinating teenagers uh, to 12 and up. And, and for middle schools, junior high schools, high schools, it's really good news. So what's next? Well, Pfizer says it plans to submit this data to the FDA as soon as possible to request that its emergency use authorization be expanded to include this age group. It is currently authorized for ages 16 and up. Now, the participants in this trial will, of course, continue to be monitored for the next two years. Will these results then have any impact on the trials in younger children? Well, you know, Karen, it's certainly a good thing that the 12 to 15 year olds did so well, but we do expect the trials in younger kids to take much longer. And the best estimates for a vaccine in the younger children age group is still really early 2022. All right. Thank you, Doc. Appreciate it. Just a few hours away now from the new baseball season starting on schedule over at Comerica. And for that, we'll all be thankful. We really are. The weather is looking a little... A bit off swing and miss, right, Ben? It's going to be cold. <laughs> That's all you can do is just giggle uh, because this is just comical that it seems every year, or at least nearly every year, uh, we seem to put the, war uh, the weirdest weather right on opening day, and this is going to be the case tomorrow. 110 first pitch, air temperatures in the 30s, barely above freezing at first pitch, but it's the winds that will be the story, feeling like, the low and mid 20s through the game and there's going to be some snowflakes even though the grass over there looks uh, fantastic right now uh, may see some snowflakes sitting on it by the end of the game 48 is where we're going or currently I should say in Detroit right now uh, temperatures very close to average for this time of year but there's already snow on the radar in the central portion of Michigan and it is headed this way we'll likely see some of those flakes this evening and again some of those could be around tomorrow as well down to the mid 30s by midnight wait do you see the temperatures and and the wind chills for tomorrow morning. You can get a sneak peek of those on the local forecasters app and also more information on the hour by hour forecast for opening day free in your app store by searching WDIV guys. OK, Ben Ford is temporarily closing its Dearborn truck plant because of the semiconductor shortage. We've been reporting on this for some time. The plant is going to close now for two weeks starting April 5th. Ford's also canceling overtime shifts for four weeks spread out between April and June plant builds the F-150. It's the second Michigan auto plant temporarily shut down because of that shortage. I-75 modernization project has made traffic slowdowns the norm along parts of the freeway, even with far fewer people commuting to work. Well, now another big project is underway as traffic slowly starts to increase. Here's Kim DiGiulio to break it all down for us. As many people may be heading back to work soon after having maybe more than a year without a commute, I-75 commuters beware. It is going to be a tough couple of months as another major project has just started. While drivers are already dealing with the I-75 modernization project in Oakland County, MDOT has added another project to the mix. Since we are in still working on the modernization project, this section between 8 Mile and 696, Let's put this project in this year so we can get this bridge work done at the same time. This project takes place between the Davison and Seven Mile, which includes heavy duty repairs on 12 bridges. We're to the point now condition wise that we need these bridges need that attention. And it, these are remedial repairs that will extend this, the bridge life 20, 25 years down the road. Yeah, I would just like to see the, the results of it when it gets completed there. I would all know from there. The thought process was get it all done at once instead of dragging it out year after year. Starting next year, we'll have the bridges in Detroit rehabilitated 
we'll have the modernization project south of 696 completed. But in the meantime, travel on I-75 between the Davison to 13 mile will be slow with only two lanes open in each direction. It's always so backed up because, you know, people can't take, you know, just straight shot 75 anymore. It will also be an adjustment as we may see traffic volume start to increase as many may head back to work soon. Maybe you put the phone down. Maybe you limit the conversations that you're having with other people and really focus on the driving because we have, we have men and women out there working to keep your route safe. Both I-75 projects are expected to be finished this November. Along I-75, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Seems like a long way away. All right, Kim. President Biden in Pittsburgh today revealing his plan to rebuild the nation's infrastructure. The $2 trillion proposal includes $650 billion to rebuild roads, bridges, and ports. Hundreds of billions would bolster the nation's manufacturing sector, the electric grid, the water systems, and broadband internet. Another $400 billion to care for seniors and people with disabilities. And to pay for it all? The president wants to increase the corporate tax rate from 21 to 28 percent. White House officials targeting passage of the new plan this summer. Republicans plan to oppose it. More on the president's plan just ahead at 6.30 on NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. New at 6. You've heard the terms transfer portal. What does it mean for college basketball and your favorite local teams? I'll have details next on Local 4. I'm Hank Winchester, Help Me Hank, and we're helping you save big time. Coming up new tonight at 6 o'clock, we're going to show you four items that have been drastically reduced. How you can save big, coming up.